Hey puppy dog, how you doing? You doing good? Okay, good. Today I've got the Derwin Pacer. This is a high-end commuter without a high-end commuter price tag. It's got all the good stuff that you want on a commuter bike. A nice tires, suspension, half-twist throttle, a rear rack with bungee cords, a pretty big battery, and a nice comfortable ride. Well, first off, they got a 500 watt Bafang motor that peaks at 1,000 watts and can take a rider up to 25 miles per hour. One is 10, two is 14, three is 19, four is 23, and five is 23, which is casually pedaling. In the settings, you can adjust the top speed from 10 up to 27 miles per hour. For that test, I thought I had it set to 27, but when I got back home, I realized that wasn't the case. So off camera, I did another speed test and was able to get this up to 26 miles per hour. Now let me show you how fast the half twist throttle can go. And throttle tops out at 21. The throttle doesn't depend on the pedal assist level. Whether you're on one or five, it tops out about 20 miles per hour. And when you're using the throttle with pedal assist, pedal assist does trump throttle. So I got the throttle held down and I'm pedaling and I'm going 24 miles per hour. If I stop pedaling, then I slow down to 20. If I start to pedal again, then over time, it's gonna jump back up to over 20. There's 21. The Pacer is fairly lightweight at 66 pounds, so it should make for a poppy start. Speed mode five, pedal assist first, first gear. There's, ooh, half a revolution before the power comes on. And it actually it gets going pretty fast. There's 15, 17, and that's 20. And then going around 50 miles an hour, if I stop pedaling, power takes about a half a second for it to cut off. If I re-engage, there's, one, just over one revolution before the power comes back on. The reaction time for the pedal assist is what I usually expect for a bike in this price range. It comes on fast and powerful. Now the throttle at a standstill. Ooh, immediate power. Pretty poppy off the line for a commuter. There's 12, 14, 15, and 18, uh, 20. So slower than pedal assist from zero to 20. Then going around 50 miles an hour if I release it, power cuts right off if I re-engage. About a half a second to a second before the power comes back on. Couldn't find a hill rating for the bike, so let's see how it does on this 15% grade. Right around the corner, it begins to climb, hitting it with a little bit of momentum. Oh, and immediately gotta lower my gears. Got a full battery, two block long stretch of a 15% grade hill. Down to six. Yeah, it's starting to feel a little burn in the legs. Coming over the top and that's it. Well, it made it up, but it is slow and you do have to help it out. Not so much where I was out of breath at the top of the hill, but my legs were starting to get a small burn. The Pacer comes with 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. We got fantastic brakes on this. Right side controls the rear, left side the front. Nice and smooth, doesn't take a lot of pressure in the levers to engage. For light braking, very smooth. No pulsating, no grinding, no squeaking. And then for some power braking, here's my puppy dog. <laughs> you got scared, you pups. Oh, you just don't know what to do. Good thing you have some good stopping power with this or my pup, she, she wouldn't have made it. Anyways, brakes are awesome, plenty of stopping power, very smooth, everything that you would expect with hydraulic brakes. One thing that I noticed when I took this out of the box was how long the battery is. That's 48 volt, 15 amp hour, and it goes from the top of the tube to the very bottom. So it looks impressive, but let's see how long it goes. That wraps up the race test. My app recorded 19.68 miles with around 613 feet of elevation. And I was averaging 24 miles per hour and only had about a handful of stops. So almost 20 miles at that speed is an awesome range. Well, first thing, this is a step through bike, as you can see, a little bit higher of a step through, but still easy to mount, dismount. It comes in gray, white, or blue and has a 300 pound capacity. There's very nice feeling full coverage fenders front and back. There's a rear rack with a bungee. As far as geometry, it's 74 inches long with a 45 inch wheelbase, a 23 inch standover height, and then a 15 inch reach. 
Now the nice thing about this is the adjustable handlebars. I've got them pushed all the way out front. So if you're a larger rider or you just want a more aggressive stance, you have that option to lower your center of gravity, which gives you a little bit better balance. Oh, balance is beautiful. Easily ride this without any hands. If I uh, stop pedaling, power cuts off nice and easy. A little, little abrupt. If I re-engage, yeah, comes on nice and smooth. Spend most of your time riding this without hands. It's very well balanced. Now, if you're a shorter rider or you just like a more upright posture, you can unloosen the two bolts here with a couple Allen wrenches, bring those back towards you about four or five inches, and that way you're sitting more upright. So you have some options on the type of posture that you want. As far as the handlebars, you have a 27 inch length. As far as handling, it's one of the more lighter bikes. As you would expect with those road grade tires, it's not a heavy frame, so it doesn't take a lot of effort to turn this. More of a sporty handling than a slow and heavy like you see on fat bikes. This is definitely something a smaller rider can manage and control. You have these very wide and bulky stitched leather grips. It is nice because it matches the color of the saddle. They're not my favorite grip, just a little bit too big for me. On the right side, you got a Shimano 7-speed SIS Index, and that's matched with an Altus derailleur. Got a Shimano 7-speed on the right side, seven to one. One push, coming back up. One at a time, rapid fire. Moving towards the back, you have an HQ soft saddle, one of the more comfortable saddles for a commuter bike. And there's a handle in the back to help you move it around, lift it. Next, you got Kenda 27.5 by 2.2 inch tires. And that is a higher quality road grade tire, smaller vibrations, sidewalk lines, things like that. You're really not gonna feel those. And they're quiet on the road and trails, even when going 25 miles per hour. And then you got Suntour XCM suspension. I'm not sure what the travel is, but you do have some nice play there. It doesn't take a big bump to really engage them. Uh, the suspension is just smooth, nice and smooth. You slap the seat post suspension on this, and this will compete for one of the most comfortable rides in class. Got an LCD color display, up and down arrows to change the pedal assist levels. Hold down the top button to turn on the headlight. And that is a 48 volt headlight, and then an integrated tail light just underneath the rack. Plenty of lights for some night riding. Hold down the bottom arrow for the walk assist mode. To enter the advanced settings, hold down the both top and bottom. And then you can change the wheel size, speed limits, background light, display units, and that's it. The only thing I didn't like was how slow it climbed hills and the longer delay when you're traveling around 15 miles per hour with the throttle. But other than that, it is a solid and smooth commuter with a nice range, cushy front fork suspension, a nice rear rack and saddle. It's just a bike that's put together nicely. Now, if you wanna compare other commuters to the Pacer, I think my website may help you out. I've got over 20 brands I reviewed in this price range. Each product is rated so you can easily find what you're looking for. As always, thanks for hopping on my channel, checking out my content. I do appreciate that and take care.